All right. This is Paul and Glee. Here it is. It says, it says this meeting is being recorded. By oh, good. Okay. Good. Okay. In the meeting, you're consist you're considering to be recorded. I'll click on continue. So. There we go. Good, good. So I have your consent to be recorded, Mr. Mr. G. You do, sir. You certainly do. Yeah. Well, well, I'm well, I'm uh, I'm Paul Inglis, and I'm a licensed uh, therapist. And today I'm talking to my friend and colleague Peter Getoff, who's also an LCSW. You also have a master's in psychology, but that is that in addition. So you've got the double one there. But uh, today we're talking about humor in psychotherapy. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping that other people will join us because it'll be great to get a conversation about that. Um, so we, I had a lot of thoughts about what humor is in therapy and kind of wanted to open up to you, uh, Pete, what, how do you, what do you envision? What do you see as, as humor in therapy? So one of the, one of the, in, in doing my research and preparation, for my show with you, because, uh, you know, I love you and I, we laugh a lot, but I also take you seriously. So I wanted to do some preparation. Uh, one of the uh, quotes that I came across is that there's over a hundred definitions of what humor is. And uh, so I thought, well, I don't, I don't want to bore. First, I thought, well, I don't want to bore the audience to tears. And then I thought, I don't want to bore myself to tears. <laughs> You know, I'm not going to, you know, in terms of going over, you know, dry definitions. Um, it can take, you know, many different, many different forms. One of the uh, questions for me that became more important and that began to stand out is what are our feelings or what are my feelings about using humor in therapy, because it's about use of self, isn't it? It's about use of self. And what do I bring? Uh, what is my attitude, my feelings about my own sense of humor? What's my, what are my thoughts about this impact on my clients? And so I, I would like to invite, you know, any therapist who is interested as far as having humor as part of their relationship with their client is to just like we would with anything else have have a certain level of mindfulness uh, at times you know not to obsess about it and then because that of course is going to affect your authenticity in terms of being funny it's going to be you know so you're going to be worrying so much about it but you know when you have some off time it's like where where am I at in terms of do I use humor? What kind of humor do I use? Could I be doing more? Am I comfortable with it? Are there parts that I'm not comfortable with? So I want to read to you, there's another quote that I came across. Um, and I have a bias because yes, humor is part of my fabric. It's helped keep me sane. Um, I have been told that I'm a funny guy. And if anybody doubts that, I can give you a list just send me a text. Uh, I can. There's a list of like at least I think at least 50 people that have signed that list. Well, if, you, if my 50 life. people say you have signed the list, then right? That, that's and my mother, my mother, may she rest in peace. She's at the top. She's number one. <laughs> so my, you know, so my mother used to tell me that. So I've just gone from there. Well, well I think it's probably some maternal bias there, but we won't get into oh, that. Oh, you think? You think? Well, you know what I, I you're, what you're, yes. what I hear you saying is that it's like. So to me, humor is a, is is similar to to self disclosure. It's <clears throat> something that, yes. that needs to be well thought out. You can't just use humor in therapy and just expect it to 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 be effective. I think it it needs to, like anything else that you're doing in therapy it needs to be well thought out. It can't be surely humor is spontaneous and it has its place in therapy to be spontaneous. But when you're thinking about it, it's good to be mindful, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's good to be mindful. Exactly. And it is like using self-disclosure. And it's about, it is it is tricky because it's about being mindful, but you want to maintain your spontaneity. So, you know, it's more like me doing the work beforehand uh, in terms of like, well, what kind of humor do you usually use, Peter? And where, like, Peter, are you susceptible going across boundaries? Are you 
and then just being mindful. And then afterwards, after the session, if I want to, as we all review what, what went down, well, you know, how was my, you know, what was, how was my use of humor and what, but here's, so you're exactly right. So here's a quote, and this is by um, a woman who, she wrote a book with, with a therapist that uh, she's consulted with, I think, for many years. Her name is Janice Wogan. And here's what she says. She says, the most, and I have a bias, I'll, I'll own that. The most successful therapists walk into the room and allow themselves to be human. Their humanity creates a space that allows humor to be expressed and to respond to it. And that really kind of, you know, characterizes uh, kind of my attitude about it. Now, Every, that very is true. Um, you know, I've, I've run across, that's very true is, is laughter is part of your humanity. And I think your sense of humor is also very tied into you being authentic and being yourself and being real for the, for the clients as you participate. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that being said, you asked a question at the beginning, you know, there's all different forms of humor that you can use, Paul. I don't, you know, you might do it differently mm -hmm. with a client, whether they're a child client, adult client. I mean, there can be, um, you can do sight gags with a child. You can do, you can be whimsical. Uh, you can be silly. You can tell jokes. Um, you can uh, point out uh, the ironies of life. Um, there's, um, I, I had a, I had a list here in terms of, um, there's exaggeration, humor, there's free association. There's, uh, like I said, ironic humor. I mean, the list goes on. So, um, can you, can yeah, you give so me the, an example of irony, for example, like irony is something can sometimes make a point in therapy. It's definitely, you can, it's a way of highlighting, um, maybe some difficult aspect of what the client's saying, but in a way that's safe and, and with, with the humor involved, it allows it to be less judgmental. Hmm. Well, I have, I have an idea of that. It's like, you know, there, well, I, I, I ran, no, go I, ahead, go okay. ahead. Tell me, what I, do you I, think? Why don't you think? I ran across, I ran it across an article. It's basically, if I could paraphrase it, it's, you know, uh, the, the therapist is speaking to a client who's really depressed and saying, I'm worthless. Everything I do turns to, to horribleness. Um, I can't do anything. I just get up and I reckon everything. And the therapist says, uh, you know, you're just a total mess. And, uh, and, and there's a, and the, and the, and the, both the therapist and the client get a good laugh out of that, but using that kind of, um, you know, sort of irony, sort of agreeing saying, yeah, you're right. You're, you're just a total mess, but you have to be careful with that because this is an established, most likely an established client you've built a relationship with the client. I definitely wouldn't say that to a client in the beginning phases of therapy. In fact, I've used humor in the very beginning phases of therapy. And I really felt like it bond where um, it didn't come across or the, or the client was like, what do you mean a little bit? And it was like, wow, you know, I, I'm, what I just said was meant to be humorous, but the client was maybe interpreting it a little bit differently because it was the beginning phases of therapy. So what I recognize is that humor is really, you know, there's different kinds of humor I think you use in the beginning phase of therapy. Maybe um, jokes about yourself, like I, you know, making a joke about something that I'm doing exactly. or what I'm saying or how I'm acting and sort of self-deprecating kind of makes you safe, kind of makes you authentic. But I think you have to be careful, you know, with irony when you're using it. It has to be you a pretty well-established client who trusts you and understands that you're trying to help them with really working things out. That's a, you're exactly right, and um, yeah, it's part of the it it's part of the mindfulness equation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it also is being uh, attentive to, in terms of, you know, what we do as an art and a science. We've talked about that, and in terms of the scientific part of the clinical part, being aware of like what phase of therapy we're in, and the client in terms of their defenses, and what's the nature of the relationship. And that's all part of our feel for it, isn't it? Our, the, the organic feel that we develop. And it's like, nah, I'm not gonna say that's too early. I don't know them or, or no, that's, that's too tender or, 
or whatever. Now, I was thinking of an example in terms of, but this might be a combination of irony and exaggeration. If I have a client who's, um, they're, they're very obsessive and they really try to get to, it's very important for them to get to therapy on time. And um, they're very, you know, kind of rigid in that way. And they have a lot of anxiety, you know, a lot of anxiety. And so, um, so it's really an issue. So, you know, it's like they want to be at therapy, therapy on time. And so we have a session and they come in and they're, let's say five or 10 minutes late and they're flustered and they're sweating. It's like, oh my God, I left and I thought there was going to be enough time and that the freeway's backed up and my, you know, my dog peed on the couch and, 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 you know, and I, and I left, uh, you know, let's say it takes 15 minutes to get to the session and they left at 9.30 and they got there at 10 after 10. And I, I might say to them, well, you know, as a way of, well, okay, let me say what I would say first. And then in terms of my analysis of what I said, so, well, maybe you should either like get up at five or you could come here and you could put a sleeping bag down and to make sure you're here. It, you know. So, <laughs> so what am I doing? I'm trying to help them lighten up with themselves, right? I'm also trying to like let them know I understand it's like sometimes no matter how much we try to control things, it just doesn't go the way in life. Right. And that's part of so that would be an example of a comment that I would make, but it would certainly would have uh, you know, a therapeutic intent, but that's also how but it also would be authentic because that's how my humor, how my humor is. So that right. Would be right. Interesting. Yeah, well, usually, usually when I'm using humor, it's mostly uh, laughing at myself. I'll say something funny and I'll comment on it. Um, and, and again, I think that's a form of of being real, being authentic <laughs> with the clients. You know, you make something, you say something funny about yourself, or you say something that that is um, perhaps um, self deprecating or whatever that I say, and that makes you, I think, yes. safer certainly. <clears throat> but you know, with children, I think that's an important to humor is so important to make them feel comfortable. Especially yes, when I'm is. working with children, if I'm working with a five-year-old, if you come in like Mr. Rogers, or you come in a little bit silly, or you're talking in a way, and yes. you're you're playful, um, that's certainly going to in, engage the child so much more, obviously, than if you sit down and say, um, "Tell me about your mother." You know, you wouldn't be saying that to your five-year-old. It's like, yeah. "How long have you been feeling <laughs> this way?" When the symptoms start, it's like, "Oh no!" Uh, but you know, if you 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 engage them, and certainly play therapy and everything is very humor oriented exactly. to engage children, make them feel comfortable, yeah. certainly with teens as well. Also, what are yeah. some of the pitfalls, pitfalls of humor? Where, where, where's humor maybe not appropriate or yeah. where it gets you in trouble? Yeah. So um, I want to answer that. I, but you brought up some really good, interesting points that I wanted to mm -hmm. respond to. Self-deprecation. So I can relate. I think self-deprecatory humor can be very useful. It can really set people at ease. It can we can be good role models. I think it helps. I think it helps us keep our sanity. And I've read some things that relate to that. It has for me. And also I tend, I tend towards that. Sometimes I do it at the when we when we use self-deprecation. There's the risk sometimes we can do it too much because it's like, then if we do it too much, then the client goes like, you know, they do, you know, in terms of modeling, I had an experience, this was just like about a month ago where I was doing a group with, um, you know, some guys that were detoxing, they were in a treatment center, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so I was making uh, some self-deprecatory remarks and, um, and one of them said to me, God bless him, he said, Mr. Getoff, you know, you don't have to keep apologizing. <laughs> you apologize too much. And, you know, maybe 20 years ago, I would have gone, oh, geez. He said, but it's like, I just laughed. I said, wow, that was a great, I said, so I said something like, okay, no apologizing for the next 10 minutes or something like that. So it was an opportunity to give him some strokes I got some feedback and it also, I, it, it's like, I said, okay, I'm going to monitor my self-deprecatory 
humor because I can go overboard, you know. Um, in terms of working with children, I couldn't agree with you more. I've been a child therapist for years and years, um, you know, for 30 years. I met a lot of child therapists. Have I ever met any child therapists that I really respected that I didn't think could get down on the floor and play and be humorous? I don't think so. You have to be able to do that, you know? Absolutely, and in fact, like you say, I think playfulness and humor really go hand in hand, obviously. Yeah, you have to be able to put a hat, you know, like put a hat on, or when you're play, doing dollhouse play, or you're doing, um, you're, you're, you're doing with the puppets. I mean, you, you, I, you have to, I have had the experience where my humor, where the child, because they were so depressed or so anxious, or they were so traumatized or so wrapped up in themselves, they were more serious than I, they had difficulty at first, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they eventually loosened up, but it's like, you know, Mr. Get off it. I mean, they literally were telling me, I don't think that's funny. And, you know, I had to like, of course, not take it personally, but look at it clinically in terms of, well, what's the message? You know, I'll back off a little bit here. I'll try another way. But um, I got I, I like go what you're saying. I got a couple of comments. Um, uh, yeah. the, the first one being, you know, that 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 is a form of humor is when especially, you know, I've had long term clients. Of course, we've worked together for years. And um, and sometimes they'll say to me, they'll say, you know, when you're about to make a point, you always like scratch your head this way and you take your glasses off and you go like this. And we have a good laugh over that because the client is the client notices things about, which is really yes. interesting because we, we're not even aware of it ourselves, but our clients are kind of sort of a mirror of what, what they're experiencing. And so yeah. just like you said, you say, I'm sorry a lot is the, in the group that they were saying that you were able to laugh about it, but you were also modeling how you were able to take that as a criticism and you were able to kind of reflect it and go, yeah, you're right. And so that was really empowering to the clients in the group because they were yeah. pointing something out instead of you shaming them or saying that doesn't belong here in therapy yeah. or, or whatever you could have said to shut them down, you used it as a form of, of, of opportunity to, to learn and to teach. So I think there is humor that way when clients recognize this you know, like, there you go again, you're scratching your head. I know it's coming. You're going to tell me that I'm being too hard on myself. Or I'm trying to be perfect. And it's like, oh my God, how'd you know that? It's like, you know, already what I'm going to say. Maybe it's time for us to think about termination because you're doing really good. You're your yeah, own therapist. That's right. You come over, look, tell you, you come over, sit in my chair. I'm going to go sit on the couch now. But, but you're exactly. right. I mean, and, and another way to conceptualize it, you're, you're right on, is like, yeah, so one of the things that we're saying here is humor is humor is a gift. And it can be a gift, use of humor can be a gift in three different ways. It's, it's a gift in terms of our working relationship with the client as far as really making it more powerful and more of a fertile ground for being able to deal with, because humor paves the way. You can deal with heavier, that's one of the things that the research says, you know, it's like, when you have humor, you can deal with heavier stuff. You can deal with dark and serious stuff because if you have the humor side, so it does that. It's Absolutely, I mean, our, cli our clients are dealing with some heavy duty material. I mean, they can be really extremely anxious. They're, they're coming to us and they're talking about things for the first time, really taking a deep dive into what's going on. And right. it's very heavy duty. And sometimes that a little bit of humor kind of is, is, is a way of, of helping right. them debrief a little bit or to let off some steam when they're feeling very intense, perhaps anxious or dysregulated, that a little bit of humor helps them stay centered in a way and gives them a mini break from that intensity of what they're That's feeling exactly because therapy right. can be, therapy is not easy. And in fact, when clients first come to, to see me, I say, I say you, you might feel worse after you first start because the first yeah. time you start, you're starting to, we're doing a deep dive into really what's going on. We're really looking at some truths That's that right. are beneath the surface and are affecting you. And so therapy yeah. is not always comfortable. But as I right. say, that little bit of humor when people are really anxious could really help out in many ways. Yeah. Another thing that you were, you were mentioning about age and, and being silly, I think we need to be aware. I should say I should be aware because I, I think I'm older than you, Pete. 
But um, when I'm, I have, I have before, a lot of my clients. Uh, I am yeah. older than you. When we well, met, you look when younger. First, okay, you look young. When we here we go again. Right. In 1980, uh, oh my God, we were, we were at Huntington Memorial. We were at Huntington Memorial working we were in the emergency room. room. It was 85, and, major, and I major. was, I was four, we were precocious, I was four, I was four years old, and you were, <laughs> right. we were very precocious. <laughs> yeah, we're getting our master's degree at USC, right? Yeah. But I'm sorry, I can you off, yes, that, that, yes. Well, so, I, I think, you know, a lot, some of my clients are in their 30s, and so uh, I'll yes. make a joke and I think it's humorous and they're like, That's right. I, I, I know they're going like, oh, they, this whole guy, he's funny. You know, I have to be aware that there's, there's a, right. definitely an age difference. So if I'm making a, a joke about Merv Griffin show, I don't think most people in their thirties, unless they're in the industry, are going to know who Merv G Griffin are. Maybe a lot of 40 year olds don't know that either. <laughs> but uh, so, so I have to be aware of that. But, but I think, I think, um, you know, in a way that that even that's okay if, if you're working with a client they they know already and it's like you make a joke it's like oh another another silly joke he thinks it's funny but in a way that is in almost embedded in itself that's that's a funny way and it's a way of laughing at yourself again being authentic being real being present right. but I think we have to be aware of that. There's other pitfall pitfalls. There are is for example like if we we have to be careful because certain jokes could be disrespectful to women That's right. or to, um, to other people or other, um, other, other people um, in the religious groups or ethnic groups. And we have to be very careful. There are jokes that That's right. we have to be very careful if we're working with someone who is uh, Middle Eastern, uh, Middle Eastern background, certain jokes may be seen as, or certain humor may be seen as very disrespectful, depending on how I feel about culture or how I feel about my religion or I feel about family and those kind of things. So I think we need to be very aware of that and mindful about that, that yeah. humor sometimes can be, and, and, and yeah, let, can be very disrespectful or hurtful for the client and disruptive. Yes. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. And you're right in terms of looking at it from the standpoint of, and the fact that we our clinical social workers, I mean, we're therapists, we're consultants, we're trainers, but, you know, and we are trained, we have been trained to be, to really embrace diversity and inclusivity. But as a result, uh, because we've been trained to do that, and we have a certain comfort level and the people that we end up seeing as clients or helping in doing problem solving with, we come in contact, yes, yeah, so a lot of diverse, a very diverse group. And I, yes, you're right on. I've had that experience. And, you know, I, I think ideally I'd like to think I can, I can connect with anybody and I can be humorous with anybody. But the reality is the very same things that we have to consider, gender, age, ethnicity, cultural. It's like, we do have to be mindful because I have, yes, I've had that experience too where I said something I thought was funny. I made a reference and it's like, <laughs> I got a blank thousand yard stare or I said something and the client, I'm thinking culturally, but they felt they could, you know, they could at least talk to me about it. But it's like, yeah, Mr. Get out is like a little touchy. So yeah, that that's, a, and you and I, I think have had the um, sort of like commiserating with each other as far as how the world is, it's like, having to be politically, in some ways, I feel like the older I get, the more politically correct or mindful I have to be because of the person who's, or the person or persons or group that's in front of me. So I agree, yeah. That's true. So yeah, I think we need to be aware of it and, and, there, and, and so many different situations. And so I think that's why just like self-disclosure, Self-disclosure should always be thought out because once you say it, there's no, it's very difficult to take it back and it could backfire in many ways. Um, it yeah. could be something that's not helpful. Yeah. So, so I think in situations where humor is not um, particularly helpful is, of course, if you have a very depressed client, um, humor could be 
inappropriate at that time. Yeah. Um, if someone is extremely depressed, um, unless the client is bringing it up, um, sometimes the client will bring up humor as a, as being more self-deprecating, and it could be more more. I'm making more some notes about what you're, about what yeah. you're saying. Go it, ahead. Yeah, it could be more more destructive that way. There's also incongruous uh, humor. For example, if you're if you're talking to a client and um, they're laughing about something that's not at all funny, it's it's about yes. uh, murdering their spouse or or yeah. doing something, and and so that kind of humor you call it out and you say what why what what's going on i see you laughing but you're talking about something very serious here is right. there something um that you find humorous um that that definitely is something to to think about and, and then the other thing is that i'm sorry no, go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead go ahead you no you you okay. you <laughs> <laughs> well like, you're uh, touching on in terms of sarcastic sadistic humor sarcastic whether it comes from them or watching what comes out of your mouth and being careful about that and what you're touching on I'm really glad you're touching on this because it's one of the areas that I came across in preparing in terms of conceptualizing is what are the risks we're talking about the risks in terms of having humor in your therapeutic environment and your therapeutic mm -hmm. relationship what are some of the risks and what are some of the reasons why some therapists are ambivalent about using it because things can go wrong. They mm -hmm. can go south. And so I just wanted to say that, yeah, so we're talking about this. There are some others, go ahead. You Maybe you have some more on your list. I have some on mine. What are some other, um, in terms of uh, risks, in terms of where it might not be appropriate or it can go south or whatever? What would you say? Well, you, you mentioned sarcasm and, and sarcasm really has no place, I think, in therapy. I think uh, sarcasm can be misinterpreted. Th sarcasm is usually can be interpreted as a hostile. Um, some, yeah. some, some of my research, um, the, the, the therapist was saying that sarcasm between two people is funny if you're a third person watching them. But if you're part of that dyad of sarcasm, sometimes and most likely you may be interpreting it as hostile. That's I mean, right. we also have to talk about Freud. Freud talked about humor as being uh, suppressed feelings, gestures, actions That's right. that society places on you. And so humor is a way of getting some of those taboo issues out. So that's that's an interesting way of looking at it. Of course, that's Freud and back in maybe his era, that was a time that was more, more apt to be that way and less now, but still yes, you, you think, think about right. humor sometimes can, I think we need to listen carefully to what clients say when they're saying something humorous or self-deprecating that there could be some underlying truths or there could be some underlying yeah. conflict that's not being said. And as therapists, we're always doing that. We're always, say, we take what the client's saying at face value, not, uh, not at face value, as you say, we're digging underneath what's behind that. Right. And so a joke or humor usually necessitates a little bit more examination. What's behind that is a client experiencing something or, or the humor is a way of hinting that something's coming out. So yeah. definitely. Yeah. So I think the, the, yeah. you, no, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, no, no. I was just saying. Also, you know, b besides just just humor and therapy, I think um, humor is important for therapists as well. When I was talking to uh, Jill Johnson Young about uh, grief, about she she has a great book, by the way. Um, I've got to go show ahead. it because I am uh, this book the, is oh. everything you want to know about grief. This, this is written from the standpoint of. Um, losing a spouse, a spouse receives a life-threatening diagnosis and eventually goes through a dying process. And she is, this is a great book. She really walks you through it. And, and it's a great learning, learning too, for therapists just to know about grief. But, you know, she talks about grief, not only being part of the dying process too, is really important, but in terms of, of her years of experience in hospice, the, some people call it gallows humor that you, you need that yes. humor to sort of help. So I think, I see yes. that in therapist therapy therapists group in Facebook where there's memes or somebody will say something funny about how much documentation they have or how they're feeling or there's as I say memes about client and therapist interactions because I think that this is hard work we especially those of us who work with trauma um, depression and anxiety certainly that we are exposed to a lot and we absorb a lot some of that vicarious trauma so I think That's that so humor true. really helps us when we're communicating and you and I certainly 
go back and forth a lot of times humorously when we're talking. So it's always a good feeling. It's a, it's a, it's a relaxed feeling. And, and as you probably research, you know, la- laughter builds up endorphins, it lowers your blood pressure. It actually builds up your immune system. It has a number of physiological yeah. reasons why it's so healthy. In exactly. fact, you know, they have, they have yoga where it's laughing yoga, where you go in there and everyone goes, ha, 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 ha. And they, and they really? purposely I laugh didn't... because. <laughs> well, the, you, you, the yoga you that get they yourself have, to laugh. what's that? You, yeah, you, it's great to go in there and just goof off. I didn't know this was even supposed to be funny, but when the yoga, uh, the yoga that came, I don't know how long, when I first heard about the yoga where you have a goat standing on your back. <laughs> I mean, you're, it's called go. You know, you, you, yeah, it's like, I, and I thought that's funny. You thought it was a like, joke, right? Excuse me, I forgot my goat. And I can't do my yoga today. Oh my god! Who's got your goat? Someone's got your goat. <laughs> so who's got my goat? Okay, and now hopefully in your audience, if there's some serious yoga enthusiasts, I mean, you may get a. I don't know if you're going to get a call. Like, what are you putting down goats? Yeah, my 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 niece, my niece may call me. She she's an acupuncturist and Chinese medicine doctor and at Sagrada really? Wellness and in, uh, in Santa Margarita. Yes, and so she she would be great. I um, if she hopped on right now, she'd have a lot to say. She may call you. But I did want to I did want to mirror your list. I I wanted to, in terms of yeah yes. That's what I came at. You know that lowers blood pressure. Humor lowers blood, you know, the health benefits lowers blood pressure, boosts brain functioning, and there's research mm-hmm. that supports this. It helps the immune system. Um, it incre- increases oxygenation in the blood, and there's, you know, there's still scientific research that supports it. Yeah. Um, do you, do you think um, humor yeah. can be cultivated? For example, um, just Great like creativity, idea. like a lot of people say, oh, I'm not an artist or I'm not creative. I also, I feel everyone's creative. It's just a matter of tapping into and allowing yourself to get in touch with that part of yourself. Is humor the same way? Could some therapist say, I just don't have a sense of humor. Um, I wish I could develop it. Is it something that you can bring or learn or is it just innate? There's clients that say that. I mean, there's people that say that, aren't there? Clients and therapists. That's a wonderful question. And I, I, I thought about that. Um, you know, preparing for, for your show. So me being who I am, this is my bias. I'd love to hear what you think, but, and if, you know, when any of, and, you know, anybody that uh, follows up, contact you, you know, at, at watching the show. Um, hopefully there's at least, at least one goat out there that's watching. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so, so my, my, so I take, a, you know, I, I take a forward thinking, a positive view, and that is every human being has, is capable because it, it's, it's, it is part of, it, it, it is an innate part of the human experience and it's part of living that we're all capable of, yes, cultivating. Some of us, it's more developed than others, and, but you can cultivate it. Sometimes it takes some work. Sometimes you have to do some therapeutic work in another area. We're not all the same, but that for every one of us, I couldn't agree with you more. I'd like to, I'd like to think that. What, what do you, what do you think about that, Paul? Well, I think, I think laughter or humor is, is, is part of the human process. So I think we all have that innately. I think it, it, we all have a sense. I don't, I don't think unless you're totally, totally different or you really have a, um, you know, you may be suffering from mental health problem, or you have a hedonia, or you have something really serious going on. But for the most part, I think everybody has a certain degree of humor that can be tapped into. Yeah. So I think, and again, humor doesn't have to be, you don't have to be um, a comedian necessarily. No. Um, and I think, I think humor is, is looking at a lens through uh, life, but seeing, perhaps seeing life in a way that sees the sometimes the ridiculousness or the pieces of life that aren't worth uh, fretting about um, it serves a, a function of maybe putting things into perspective certainly when you use That's humor right. so I think everyone has that capacity I think to, to to develop that so 
if you feel like you don't have a very good sense of humor, I think that, that you can actually learn that. And there are actually schools I, I've run across. You probably ran. There's there's yeah. journals, there's programs of, there of using laughter for educational purposes and for yes, psychological reasons. And so yes, I think are. if someone really feels like they they have a deficit, they could certainly have these resources yes. that are available. Excuse me. Yes. I was just thinking, excuse me. No, I was just, that's funny. I was just, I was listening and I was, I was like associating. I was thinking, yeah, you go to your doctor and you say, excuse me, doctor. Uh, I think I have a humor deficit. But what do you recommend? Um, but, yeah, no, you're you're, you're exactly when right. The, and, the, and the doctor says, let me check your funny bone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. See, we find that humorous, but most people would just go, oy vey. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really isn't a bone called the humorous? Isn't there a bone called the humorous? Right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. There is. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're riffing. We're riffing now. And you and I are great at riffing. We can riff. I have it. Uh, let me change, uh, change, uh, let me, let me jump in here and, and, and yeah. talk about something that I think is important is that, that, uh, and this has happened to me. And fortunately I was able to, to weave it in to my therapy sessions and it, and it was a positive thing in terms of, of, uh, communication, but there have been times where I have laughed or, or smiled inappropriately during the session. And that could be a number of reasons for that. It could be my anxiety about the session. It could be that the client is saying something or doing something in their body language that might might be triggering me to smile, or it could be something just popped in my head for no unforeseen reason because we're human, and that that needs to be addressed. And and fortunately, in some of these sessions, the 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 the, the client the client called me out on it. Um, at first, uh, the client may be upset, or the client was able to call me out and. Instead of denying it, I embraced it and said, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm so glad you, you spoke up. That's really important that you did that. Um, there are reasons that it happened. Sometimes mm. we're human. Um, maybe this was going on. And so it, it, was, it, it works out. But I think that we've had that situation. You might be speaking to somebody and for some reason, something funny or something humorous pops into your head because we're human and we might smile or laugh or have a giggle for no reason. I mean, that, right. that happens, right? When you're serious, you go like, oh no, why am I laughing at this? Um, or it could be, it also can be thera a therapeutic issue. It could be a counter-transference issue where we're feeling anxious or we're That's feeling right. somehow affected in, in a way that is causing us to respond with our own biases, our own feelings about the situation. So it could be something that's going on inside of us. So I think that 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 has happened, but it needs to be addressed. It would be wrong to say, "Oh no, yeah, you're wrong. I'm not laughing. I'm not smiling." But yeah, if you're calm yeah. on it, yeah, just like if the client says, "You're always doing this. Why you? Why do you always do this before you say something?" And that might be humorous, but it is also something that the client. What is the client really saying? Are they when they see this, do they get anxious because they're afraid I'm going to do a deep dive into a feeling that they're feeling uncomfortable with or whatever it is. So I think we need to be aware that being human, that we have that, uh, that time of inappropriateness where we could possibly smile or laugh during a time. But I think how we deal with it and how we weave it into a therapeutic relationship within the client is important, certainly. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. That is a great, you know, well, you know, one of the things I love about you and I really love about your show is you, you ask the great questions that you ask because, mm -hmm. because they're so right on and they get me to think and hopefully it gets our audience to think too. So exactly, that has happened to me. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that about you and mm -hmm. your work, because I think it's important, you know, we're, we're, we're role models and so so thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. And yes, I have had it happen to me. And I couldn't agree with you more that there's a couple standards or caveats that I try to follow uh, in my work when that happens. One is to own it. That's number one and not deny that I didn't smirk or I didn't what, whatever, uh, yeah, uh, chuckle. So that's one is to own it. And two, is um 
it's an opportunity um, and not to take the client's time to do our own analysis of why we did it, but to acknowledge that we did it and um, to uh, take that as our own learning as far as like afterwards, like what was going on in terms of the counter-transference. And three, as you know, for so many of us, including many of our clients, one of the issues we all struggle with is like an over feeling and over responsibility, like, you know, in terms of how uh, we affect other people. And so it's an opportunity to say, you know what, my reaction, that was about me. It was about me. It wasn't about you. It was about me, my own. I've got some feeling. I've got something, you know, and it's something I'm going to look at. And, and so owning that and being at an opportunity to make that separation. It's like, no, you didn't do anything wrong. It's not something wrong with you, something bad. This was about me. So that kind of separation and boundaries, you know, the whole in terms of attachment stuff, it's like me, not, not you. And then the fourth thing, like you said, it's important to process, it's so important to process it and to ask them, give them an opportunity to tell you how they felt, how they feel about what you did and to make room for that, whatever feeling they have. I feel, Mr. Getoff, I feel like you're not listening to me. Mr. Getoff, I feel that hurt my feelings. Mr. Getoff, what's wrong? Whatever it is, we have to give them room to share and we have to, part of our job, room and we can take it, whatever they say about, you know, and then, and an opportunity to process it. So. As you know, even what, even you know, in the category of making mistake of therapist errors in therapy, that can be uh, grist for it can be used for client growth, our own growth later after. But it can be used for client growth. It, it can be used for something the client can get out of it. So those Actually, are the, absolutely, yeah, we're we're modeling certainly yeah. we're modeling so that we we're not caveats. we're not perfect yeah. we're not perfect. We make mistakes, but right. we own it. Right. So yeah, that's what I would yeah. follow, and, and that's what I what I've done. On that, on that yeah, and, and I think I've become much more sensitive to that and how that could be misconstrued. So even if it's something where a client's saying something that's somewhat humorous, I might laugh, and then I'll usually um, interpret it. I'll say, "Oh, you know, I was laughing. Um, what you said it was not. It was related to this because I want to make sure that I'm open and clear. So because I think if you if you even when you're laughing at something that's maybe humorous that the client's saying we don't know how much of the client what the client is experiencing by that so just like i would would want to clarify that so if, if i point. if the client's saying that something humor i go oh that's fun that's i say you know i'm i was laughing because you know you had said this and i was looking at how you had said this before and these two things are just so opposite and that's what i was responding to that's a good because point. i want to make sure that the client is understanding my my reaction to it in a way that is therapeutic because yeah. i think we don't know how we don't know the entirety of how the client may be experiencing what we're saying no. or no. laughing or doing right yeah i agree yeah so this is good i i'm you know i'm glad we, we got unfortunately uh we didn't have anybody jumping on but uh but uh this has been this has been really yeah. helpful i think i think Humor definitely, as as you've done your research, humor is associated with positive therapeutic outcomes. Clients feel better in a relationship yes. with a therapist that has a sense of humor, or that there's an ability to laugh, or there's an ability to feel comfortable around yeah. humor, and that, that that most clients report better connection and better therapeutic outcomes. There, there yes. was a study that was done yeah. actually with that, so. I think it's really important to, to know that, that that is a important part, I think, of engaging clients, making clients feel comfortable within the therapeutic relationship and really helping them with feeling open in a, in a safe environment as well, too. Because I think with humor is similar, so very similar to, so to, to, to self-disclosure yes. in, in the sense that clients feel safer, I think, when the yeah. therapist is more human or more real, for example. In terms of wrapping up, I, I'd like mm -hmm. to just undertake a, 
30 seconds and see if there's anything else that I wanted to sure make sure that I shared. And, and then anything else that you'd like to say or like to ask me. Um, now, here's a quote, but you know what? We take this with, I mean, from one, from one article that I read about also as adults, you know, in terms of as adults, all of us and our, and our clients and what happens as we become adults, uh, does our humor quotient go down? Do we laugh less? Do we laugh more? I, I, one article said that they counted, this guy counted the number of times that a child laughs, laughs per day and the number of times an adult laughs per day. And he said, he said, children laugh over 300 times a day and adults laughed over 15 times a day. And I thought- I read that, yeah. <laughs> well, what happens? <laughs> what happens to us? I mean, whatever you want, however you want to take that, right? I mean- I think we laugh more than 15 times a day. We're, well, we're... you and I do, sir. No, <laughs> I, I, no, but I think we do too. I think, I mean, as adults, we do. I think that's true. Maybe this was done in another, I won't say the country, I won't cast aspersions. Uh, maybe it was done in another country where <laughs> adults laugh less. I I don't know. Well, I th I think it, it's it's interesting. Um, some of, some yeah. of the reading I've been doing is that the, some therapists will uh, have their clients keep a, a laughing a laughing journal or humor journal where really they actually monitor it because they see humor is so important in terms of lifting their spirits. And so just like we have clients monitoring their anxiety we this we could also have them keep track of when you find things idea. humorous and write about it and bring it in the session because um humor can be very healing that way so i think i think maybe maybe humor is is a is another tool that we have that we could give yes. us homework and and use it in as therapeutic yes. intervention so yes. something to think about yeah. well and one thing that we haven't touched on you know one of your specialties um uh, I, I've worked with them, but you know, you're, it's a real specialty for you in terms of working with couples. I, we haven't even, I mean, in terms of interactive humor, I, I know that I've, when I have worked with couples, I mean, that's something that's come up in terms of trying to, uh, in terms of communication, in terms of closeness, in terms of intimacy, that we're actually, I've, you know, we do a, I've done a prescription of like, so I want to take 10 minutes and tell each other some jokes or uh, tickle each other. I mean, whatever it is, or watch a content because there's not enough. It, it appears that if you know, we do our assessment, like there's not enough that of that playfulness or that humor coming out in the, you know, and I'm sure you could speak to this more than I could in terms of your specializing with them. But I imagine you probably, you've noticed that too. You've done that kind of work. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just another form of communication is a sense of humor and sense of humor can get you through the rough times. Just like right. I was talking about that. If you're with death and dying, a sense of humor can get you through some very difficult times. If your spouse or partner is dying from cancer or whatever, and they're dying at home and you're going through the process, uh, it's important to have your sense of humor, especially that era, at that time you feel maybe you might feel guilty about humor, but humor is so much part of of life and is part of, of that. So it's important to have that. You don't have to be sad all the time. It doesn't mean you disrespect the person, but certainly with couples too, I think it's a form of communication. And yeah. I think humor can get them through some very rough times too. And a little bit of self-disclosure here and not making it about me. I'm just going to say this and then I want to get back to you. But you know, I've been married almost 32 years and we've had 30, our ups 30, and downs. Wow, 32 years. We've had our ups and downs. But if you ask my wife, one of the reasons she'll tell you she said that she stayed with me through thick and thin because she thinks I'm funny. She's, and we let and we can laugh together. I mean, because you know, like like I said, like everybody, we've had some real ups and some real downs. So that's just uh, you know, that's just a, a subject, you know, an N of one. But um, yeah, in terms of couples and, and relationships and whatever. Um what, well, I don't think I don't think I don't think my wife thinks I have a very funny sense of humor. I think I'm funny, but I don't. I think she. Let me uh, talk. She, to, you know what? Can, may I talk to her for a few? But minutes? you know the thing. The, but the thing I what the thing I am. I tend to be very silly, so I'll yes, come in. Do. I'll do something very silly, and she never knows what to expect. You. So she's always on her toes because oh. I may come in and do a little dance, or I might do some. 
funny, playful thing, but I'm very playful that way. Um, that's so that's, wonderful. that's the way I compensate for my lack of, lack of jokes that aren't that funny. No, they're, more, they're, more da- they're more dad jokes, you know, the, those are those, those kind of dad jokes that that's, yeah. I'm, I'm the king of that. <laughs> but Peter, right. it was great to connect with you and talk about Thank this really so important. Much. So a couple of things I wanted to say is, um, I'm going to be yeah. doing a, an, another show with, uh, with uh, Michael Michael Dietrich Chaston on February 24th at 10 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. Great. And he, what's that he, gonna be? What's gonna be the subject of that? It's, it's going to be on, on his book. And th- this is really great. It's called Changes. Um, it's, oh, it's, yes, a, it's an extremely good book that. that he has written and has a, a wonderful material in it. So we're gonna be going over that. He's also developed these things for um, which are which are changes cards, and these are great because they can be used in an organization or in a meeting. Wow! Um, and they talk about just how the group is functioning and team building. So, so these are great too. So, I'm looking forward to talking to Michael then, um, and that will be great also. But and that's on the twenty fourth. That's, that's on the twenty fourth of February. Yes, February twenty fourth, uh, ten o'clock wow. in the morning, Pacific okay. Standard Time probably will be um, maybe on, on live. I'm not sure yet, but we will know. But anyway, it was, it was great. To, do you have any parting jokes or anything that you'd like to say before you go? <laughs> oh, I, I, can't, I, can't just think of, I can't just think of one. I keep, I'm the only thing that keeps coming to my mind, I, I'm, not, I'm gonna have to analyze this. I don't know what it's about, but I keep thinking about the goats, the yoga, the goats on somebody's like, what's, you know, but I like yoga, but anyway. But I'm to keep thinking about goats. Anyway, and don't take that personally. So um, <laughs> this was wonderful. And I really- I, th- I, think, I, th- I think you really should try goat yoga at this point. I think I'm going to put on my list. It's still early enough in the year that I can add it to my New Year's resolutions. And I'm going to put it, you know, I, I'm going to add it. If, <laughs> if there's room on that list, goat. And make, goat sh- make sure you take a video or a picture so you can share it with me. Paul, I would do nothing less. If I do it, you will, yes. You'll be the first one to get a screenshot, whatever it is. Of, yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. You're I, welcome. I, as always, it's been just such a pleasure and I really appreciate the opportunity. And um, we'll, we'll talk soon and, and take care of yourself and your family. And You too, stay safe, stay healthy, you stay too, happy. Man. Keep making those jokes, Pete. And you too. Keep, All right. Keep feeling, keep being sick. Uh oh. <laughs>